player, and you got to feel this. Hey, Doug, if you got the ball right now and you're that type of scorer, you got to be a threat. The guy who's really emerged is one of the pivotal guys in Princeton has been Saunders, even on that pass. Free throw for Finley. To try to give them the lead, instead we'll stay tied. And this is one of these things, especially for Glenn, and you've dealt with this all season long. Hey, these things have happened, but you got we've got to bounce back and we've got to overcome it. Part of this thing is only if we do resistance as one gets stronger, and they need to show their mettle right now. Zach Rosen is back in, so they have some offensive semblance. They're getting to Bernardini on the block. Man. Great help. Tremendous defensive foul, but it's become defensive ball game now. Well, in Princeton, over the last few minutes, since this little thing has changed it, their offense, you can see they got more bounce in the step. The ball is moving a little bit. It's going from side to side. And by pulling it out like this, when Penn puts so much heat, it spreads it out and creates all that openings. If you look on the back door, there's space now. Clock winding down, and a great, great job of coming over on defensive help by Lewis. And these are the little things that help you win games. But again, here comes the shot clock winding down. Schroeder's on the drive, and Lewis comes out of nowhere. And here comes Berendini. They ran that play in the first half. He couldn't have missed out a whole lot worse than he did. No, and it's, it's interesting. He's such a powerful player up top. He just needs to slow down a little bit. But this is what we were talking about with Glenn. They're, they're needing that leadership, and, and Tyler's got to be the one that steps up and provides it because he can do it. He can carry that load offensively. Nice pass. And nice defense from behind by Bernardini. And down low, hanging out for dear life. The foul call is going to be against Princeton here in the second half. And these are things how you close out games. And again, Jack's live streaming games a lot more. I got to ESPNU.com today. And the Quakers reclaim a two point lead. And they're coming back with the heat. And this was very effective, especially when they made that run. Putting pressure on them, making them look at different looks. So they beat the 10 second possibility. And now they'll settle back into the offense with under four minutes left to go. You would think Davis would try to do something here a little bit. He too has a mismatch. Tyler Bernardini would have a hard time guarding him out there. Look at the quick hands by Rosen, and then it's knocked right into Davis's hands. Great tip by Cameron. And now Rosen leading the pack as it knocked away, and the foul call will be on Rosen. It's offensive. At that point, Ken was dominant. Turley got called for throwing the flagrant elbow, tossed out of the game. A mini 5 nothing run, part of a 9 nothing run for Princeton as they got back in. And this is probably traditional. You've seen these things over the years. 45-47, two-point game in the last four-minute clip. A lot of years, that game would never get out of the 40s between these two teams. And I'm not <laughs> talking about you know, games that were played in 1950. I'm talking about games that were played in the 1980s. You know, this is going to be interesting to see what... What teams can kind of impose their will in the last three and a half minutes here? So we cross three minutes left to go here at Jadwin Gym in Princeton, New Jersey. It is Penn and Princeton, longtime rivals, alongside Jack Ramp. Don't forget, coming up next, the Old Spice High School Showcase, DeMatha and Bishop O'Connell. Well, 75% shooter on the year. So then it comes down to how efficient can you run your offense and how can you make stops? So Bernardini's got 14, and the Quakers' lead is four. Here's that pressure that was so effective for them early in the game and taking it away. And in this case, Saunders gave it away. The number one team in the Ivy League with field goal percentage defense and defending the three-point line. you got to man up and stop these guys. Got the ball, you got a few reverses already. And again, they're trying to go inside. Okay. Can't really too happy to use a little clock here. And another block shot by Saunders. Boy, Saunders has been good. I mean, interesting again, here's Schroeder. Big spot at a big time and hiding it and take big shots. You need someone to step up and drill. 
your free throws and unfortunately you missed that one, but it gives them life. So you come up on two minutes to go, three point game. Both of these teams try to keep pace, chasing Cornell in the Ivy League. And Rosen, that's just a heads up, heady play by a freshman. Well, and again, he's made big plays. Again, when I'm talking to Tommy Amaker, they could not stop him down. Same type of game you see on back and forth, he took over at the end. And when you're Glenn, you got a freshman doing this thing. That, that's impressive. Where's he going to be in three years from today? There's another freshman. Somebody's got to come up big on this possession for Princeton. And there he is. Doug Davis from three-point land. Back down to a two-point game. Oh, great possession. And these are the types of things he can do. And it's funny, even going into this game, you got two of the best freshmen in the conference, Zach Rosen and Doug Davis. You see where the future is heading in this league. And they both make big plays. And there's Davis making the big steal along the baseline. And again, you would think, hey, you, you need to try and attack right there. One minute, one minute to go. Princeton with the basketball. And Penn on a two-point lead. Interesting because they'll go with the high screen and roll right now. And again, you strike when the iron's hot. He's a tough guy to guard. Great pass, reversal. And Mavratis came in, missed on the shot. Scramble for the basketball. Possession now favors Princeton. So it's going to Princeton, you would think, either way, unless you get a traveling violation. Held ball, Princeton will have it. If Penn fouls, not in a shooting situation, Princeton's at the line for one and one. Now let's see what they came up with. Same thing, they got the high screen and roll, looking to create a mismatch. Reversed it, nice pass. Whoa. The official was about to say that was a shooting foul, I believe. And especially in this rivalry. Bang! For Finley, trying to tie the ball game. And does. Remember the Quakers have a timeout, Princeton does it. The interesting thing what they run here, they just called the timeout and explained all the situations. They missed it, what they were going to do, if they make it, what they're going to do. Think maybe a screen and roll might be coming at some point. Under 10 seconds left. That's Bernardini, lost the handle, trying it, won't go. Rebound down, Frere at the buzzer, and we are going to overtime. 